Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have three Duro Reds in front of me, uh, two from the same producer, from the same vintage, uh, 2013, but we'll get onto those after we've done the first wine, which is uh, Altano Duro uh, Reserva Quinta do Ataide. I've probably got the pronunciation of that completely wrong. 2011 Reserva. Uh, this is from the Symington family, famous for their ports, but making a name with their table wines. Let's give this one a whirl. Well, it was a great vintage uh, in 2011 for both uh, port and for uh, the Douro table wines. I stick my nose in here and there is a rich, juicy, polished berry and dark plum character coming through. Uh, a little bit of herb, a little bit of spice. Uh, it feels like it's going to be uh, fleshy in the right place, but um, uh, but never too big. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, what's the alcohol? Uh, uh, 14%. It, I mean, it's it, typical for the Douro. I mean, that, that's... Uh, neither too high or too too low loads of them are around 14 14 and a half percent uh this smells it smells like it's going to be quite tasty yeah that's a sleek beast of, no beast the wrong word it's certainly sleek um and um some doro wines are, are elegant and uh uh, and and perfume. This one is it's got a bit more power than than, than some of those uh, more ethereal ones. Uh, but it's not too it's not all brawn. There is some brain there. It's got these nice berry, the herbs, a little bit of black currant in there. And um, I, sometimes uh, Dura reds remind me of uh, some Argentinian Malbecs. And uh, if you if you're into your Malbecs uh, from Argentina, that's a, a how much is it? Twelve pounds fifty. Can't complain about twelve pounds. Twelve pounds fifty. It's um, pretty decent grog that, and uh, uh, so I'm going to have another swig. Yeah, that's rather nice. Okay, the next two are from um, Quinta Nova de Nossa Senhora de Carmo, to give it its full name. Uh, this is the estate. Um, from the, the Amarim, which is, well, I don't know if they're the world's biggest cork company, but uh, uh, they're certainly a major player in the cork market. But they've had this, uh, this estate in the Dora for quite a few years. So uh, this is a Referencia Grand Reserva. I think the other one's labelled uh, Grand Reserva. Uh, the difference is that um, this is, uh, it's got says Vinyas Velias blend. There are these vineyards where they, they're not quite sure what's in there because someone planted something, then a few years later someone else planted something else and so on and it all got a bit of a, uh, a bit of a mishmash. Sometimes you find vineyards that have got uh, as many as 30 different grape varieties in there. But this has a Vinyas Velias blend uh, plus Tinta Rorige aka Tempranillo uh, whereas the other one says uh, Vinish Tellis Blend plus Turiga Nacional. I'll do the one with the Rorige in first, which is the uh, the Referencia. So let's give this a whirl. Now it's not as good a year 2013 as 2011, but this still, still smells um, juicy, rich, um, and there's a softness and warmth about it, um, like a, a, a warm, plush, vanilla, um, vanilla tinged berry character there's, there's the wildness of the Douro I mean the Douro is a very rugged wild herby place and you can you, you get that wild herbiness in a, in a lot of the wines um, but this feels like it's a wine that's uh, doesn't feel like it doesn't smell like there's any edges of it that uh, are uh, out of balance it smells like it's going to be complete and tempting well, it is really nicely balanced, um, it, way, way off being ready. It is um, um, it, what I, I, I noticed uh, that maybe speaks of the vintage. Um, I don't know whether it's the vintage or the barrels that are talking there, but there's a, a slight green edge to the tannins, which, uh, as it is at the moment, they are just a little bit on that uh, uh, forbidding and chewy character, uh, for, forbidding and chewy side. But it feels like there's enough weight of fruit behind to, uh, um, to, to, to merit that amount of oak and that amount of tannin from the grapes. And uh, it hangs around in, in your mouth. Yes, there's this green edge, but there's a voluptuous fruit as well. I used the word voluptuous for the first one, didn't I? Uh, but yes, it does feel like there is, uh, that, um, th th there is a wealth of fruit, but not so much that it's trying to, trying to bludgeon you. Nothing's too ripe. Um, it feels, feels really nicely balanced. And there's some delicate bits in there as well. A um, little bit of spice, a little bit of floral character. I like that. So the next one, um, so same producer, Grand Reserva, um, and it's, this is the one that's got uh, the Turiga Nacional in. Uh, same alcohol, 14%, give it a whirl. Smells warmer, richer, fleshier, 
fuller bodied um, and as if it's going to have uh, more depth of berry and plum. Um, I, I can't remember whether I smelt a little bit of greenness there or whether, whether it was when I tasted it. Maybe it's less herby than the previous one but a greater weight of fruit. Uh, they both smell good uh, but different. Don't notice the greenness as much. A bit of tar, uh, licorice. Licorice for me is a sign um, of ripe grapes from a warm climate. Um, and there is more of um, what I call the desiccation character. It feels like maybe some of those berries, some of those grapes, have shriveled up a little bit. So the tannins you're getting are not those uh, slightly earthy green tannins that you were getting in the first one, but slightly shriveled, uh, shriveled tannins. Uh, I know what I mean. Um, and smoky bacon uh, character coming through as well, uh, again. Uh, it's funny, I've just done a, a couple of uh, Chilean Pinot Noirs and I, I, I said that one of those had a, a little bit of smoky bacon character. Uh, there are some, uh, some Coopers whose barrels have a very, uh, in part, a very smoky bacon-like character uh, to a wine. Uh, and I think that is the, the, the barrels they're talking ra rather than the, uh, what was in the wine itself. Which do I prefer? Ooh, I like bits of both of them. Uh, today, I, the Referencia, uh, so the Tinta Rorige one, uh, is the one that uh, looks um, more alluring, but then it's got that green edge of tannin. The, the, the second one, the Tinta, the, uh, the Tariga Nacional based, uh, based one, uh, it is maybe uh, just a little bit too dense, but I do like that depth of fruit. Oh, I, I, the, the sort of wines where if you have a, a case of each of them, you'd probably sit there and uh, over the course of several years, try the two side by side and one day you'd prefer one, the next day you'd prefer the other. Um, I, they're, they're both pretty good. And, uh, but the Altano was, 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 was good too. Um, maybe not as ambitious a wine as, uh, as these two, but for, of the three, uh, the one I want to drink tonight is the Altano. Ask me in 10 years time, however, and um, it'd be a toss-up between the two Quintanova wines. See you soon.